Great. Thank you very much. So we have always encouraged our mentees of this process of contacting professors. The, the reason is that in developed countries, the people that have the funding are the professors. They are the ones that, that get the grant. Then what happens is that they are looking for students to come and work for them because the, what the professors do is that they have a problem they want to solve through research. Then they look for money, they get this money, but professors don't go to the lab. Professors, like 90%, let me not say 100, but 90% of, of professors I have met before, sometimes they don't even come into the lab, right? So, but who are the people that will be going into the lab? They are students, master students, PhD students. So that is why they are looking for you. So what some professors do is that they advertise their offers. That is gonna be increasing in the coming years because most times as part of um, equity, diversity and inclusivity, they require, you, are, you, are, you are required to show how you are gonna disseminate opportunities. So that's why many people today, they go to Twitter, just make sure that they, they reach everybody, right? As much as possible. But we still have a lot of professors who are not still, maybe because they are not sure of the opportunities, they don't advertise. So if you contact a professor, let's say you graduated and you, you have a, an area of interest, let's say you're interested in artificial intelligence, what you have to do is to go to check a university of your choice, look at the department that is housing your area of interest. Let's say if you're interested in artificial intelligence, look for a professor who is working in artificial intelligence. Prepare, so after reading the professor's area of interest, maybe and you see that his work is in tune or aligned with what you want. So what you do, is you, what we call letter of interest. You just prepare an, e let me call it an email of interest, but try to understand that first impression matters, right? Because even if some of us have graduated, I still think that some of us, our, our, first, our first writing, when you make your first draft, there are a lot of errors. Some things are not well thought out. There are some ambiguities, there are some claims that you cannot back up. There are some things that you need to include that you are not including. So that is why in our, in, in our mentorship group, we can help you review your letters to make sure that you are adding at least some content that will, it's not like if you don't add it, you cannot get a um, reply from a professor, but we are just at the level that we don't want it to be that it is because of your writing that make a professor that many professor to not to have interest in you so that is why we encourage you pass it through one of our mentors so that we can help you review to make sure that you have written make a good case in your letter of interest so well so send that letter of interest to the professor another thing you should another thing you should be out you should be aware of is that not all your letters will receive will be responded. We have a lot of people who write letters to professors. Nobody, they will not respond. It's fine, but as many like the more you write, at least some of them will be responded, and some of the responses will be like, "Oh, we don't have funding, but your application is good." Some some of them will be like, "Oh, um, my school." Uh, 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 this is not a time for admission. Try to contact me again in fall 2022 or in winter 2022. Things like that. So all those, for me, those type of responses are okay. The worst thing is for you not to reach out. So that is why I don't believe in this season thing. They, I know that there are seasons, but contacting professors doesn't have a season. If the professor is not ready, if it's the, if, if, let, it, let the professor be the one that will tell you that he is not accepting. Don't be the one that will not accept yourself by not reaching out. So reach out. I have a, I have a, one of our men, one of our men, men, men one of our men, mentees here. 
she re, uh, the person reached out to a professor. The professor said, contact me in November 2022. At least you have received that information. What you have to do, just mark your calendar. While you are doing other contacts, you have put that. And the professor, the professor that asked you to contact him or her in November 2022 already has that communication trend. In November, when you contact him, he will not see you as a new person, right? Unlike waiting to start contacting them when it's admission time, right? So prepare your document, prepare your, a good CV, like what Emmanuel said, and we have been saying it, we even have templates or that you can use, that you can read and help you put the right content on your CV. So these are the things that you have to do. We can help you review them, right? So then try to get your transcripts. If you cannot get your original transcript, like what we have been saying, if you know your grades, there can be a student and unofficial transcript just to start the ball rolling. Don't wait until you get everything, right? If, you, if you're waiting, know that the, the market is becoming very competitive, right? So you just try to reach out on time. One thing about professors is that if they give you their award, they stand by their award. That is why it is good to reach out on time. If let's say Nathaniel and I, we have the same qualifications and we are reaching out to Professor A. If I reach out first and Professor A likes my application, he will, he will put me on list number, on number one on his list. Let's say two days after then Nathaniel uh, reach out to the same professor and Nathaniel has the same qualifications. Professor will also reply to him and say, okay, he will put Nathaniel on waiting list two. If an opportunity comes out, professor will contact for what I, what I know about how honest professors here are. Not everyone, but a lot of them are very honest and they, they follow procedures. So the professor will first of all give me the opportunity. It will ask me, am I willing to take it? If I say no, then it will go to the next person. So that is the importance of timing. And that timing is not under our control. All we just have to do is to apply. Just reach out as, as, when you, as, as, as soon as possible, reach out. So I think those are the things that I can re remember. Con uh, reaching out to professors doesn't bite. It doesn't take your money, sorry, directly. I know it takes money because it's time, right? It doesn't take your direct money, but I think it's the cheapest option. And it doesn't stop you from applying to standard scholarship or applying for standard scholarship, doing other things. It's just one way to pass out your time. It's one way to, it's like a hobby. Just reach out. So this year we created um, a challenge, uh, email to professors, challenge. I am glad that at least some of some of them, some of people who are who we are celebrating. And I, I, I know that in our in the last meeting that we had, the person that I read that he got about 15 responses is one of the person that has two scholarships now that is trying to choose one. The person that we reviewed the, the scholarship for the when we did our our CV cafe, that person actually has a scholarship. It's not a full scholarship, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a nice scholarship for, for him. He's making a decision whether he's gonna take it or not. So it, in a nutshell, reaching out to professor for me, is like the easiest method you're gonna use is the easiest. We have a student now who has reached out to a professor after a rigorous interview rigorous discussion the person is on there has been given a go ahead to apply and we are looking forward that very soon that will be a done deal so we have a lot of testimony about reaching out to professors so try that method as your number one method while you are going for other competitive procedures and that is what i have to say i hope this helps if you have any question we can take it so that we don't um, stay here for long. Thank you. Yeah, so there is something I, I wanted you to also talk about. Like Emmanuel said, he made mention of um, he applied to 15 schools or something like that. He reached out to professors. 
I think it would be nice to also uh, let them know that whoever um, applies for this OFP and Education USA uh, program shouldn't just relax, apply to one school and just relax. I think it would be nice you stress it again. Yeah. So I think that that is that that's as you said it. I just for me to concur, knowing that you don't control the admission committee. The people that give the people that give admission are the admission committee members. No matter how good your application is, a committee will sit over it. It's when they say you are qualified that you will get it until you get a yes. The best thing is to keep applying, keep reaching out, keep reaching out, because you don't you don't actually know the one that will will fall for you. We've we've had people that did interview on this platform. I was thinking they would get it, but they didn't get it, right? Some people that did interview also got it, but some did not get it, right? So a lot of things happen. A lot of things happen. So the the, the ball falls back to our courts as applicants. As an applicant, you have to keep using everything within your reach until you get a yes, and a yes with an offer. You, you don't, you will not rest. That is it. That is the resilience. Else, you will just be out of market. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Please, if you have any question, drop it now. Please. Uh, good oh. evening. Yeah. Uh, good evening, please. I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, please, um, I actually came in here late. So my question here is, um, please, how do you reach out to professors online like that are in charge of scholarships and um, what is, or, sh or should I say, what is um, programs that deal with scholarship? Like, how do you reach out to them? That's my question. Okay. So there are, there are several ways to contact a professor, especially we are in a world now that the mode of communication is changing rapidly. There are different platforms. So one way you can reach out to a professor, it's if you go to a school of your choice, because you as a student, you know what you want, right? You, you, you based on your background and your interest, at least you, you have an idea of what type of department will house your interest. So you let's say you go to a school now like McGee University or Auburn University, and you go to the faculty, maybe the faculty of uh, the, the faculty of engineering. You go to the department of maybe mechanical engineering. So you check the faculty. They are, there's always because professors most times they are categorized in, in the in the field they call faculty. Once you get the they, they, they on that website, they describe every, there's like a synopsis, a summary of what the fact all the professor is interested in, what type of research he's doing. So you can start from there and start reading them one after the other to see whose work is related to what you are interested in. So once you can pick a professor there, once you can get one, most, on that website, they have their email address. So you just take the email address and put it on your, go to your Gmail, your Yahoo mail or any email you are using, then prepare or have a list. Sometimes what some people do, they, you can create an Excel sheet, create an Excel sheet of professors, schools and their, uh, their contact. Once you have those ones, then you can prepare your letter, prepare your CV that you will send to them. That is one way. Another way you can, con you can reach out to, you can meet, professors in on LinkedIn, you can, you can see them, read their profile, contact them. We have a video that we have made, Nathaniel made that video on how to contact professors via LinkedIn. So we have that, we can make that available to you. Then if you're active on Twitter, it's just for you to follow the right people using the right keywords. Your field has have a keyword, you can follow the right keyword, then you will you will always be getting maybe notification of when how their activities online. So those are some of the methods. I think there is also there was a, a link somebody sent to us about um, school, is it about schools or professors? I think there was that link that time. Yeah, I think US US News link. Yeah, something like that. So there are different methods. 
but you have to start somewhere. Does that help? Yes, thank, yes, you, thank you very much. much. Okay, okay, really really All right, someone has another question. Chima, Emmanuel, uh, Chima Philip, sorry. He says, um, so what is the chance of those, what is the chances of those having HND? Yeah. So I I have not based on the type of degree, I've not really had any contact with anybody that says, oh, I when I was when they were applying, they asked me if it's a if it's HND or BSc. I don't really have that direct contact, but I am thinking that if you can if you if you see a school of your choice, I think most schools they have this um contact person that you can contact with questions like that, okay. I have this type of degree. What are my chances of being admitted? Without paying anything, they can tell you that, oh, if you have this degree, you don't, there's no chance for you, right? But if they look at it, you tell, if they, they look at it, they tell you that, oh, it doesn't mean once this is, this is, uh, uh, this is a, um, a post-secondary school, post-secondary degree from a post-secondary um, institution that can be that has equivalent as bachelor's then there's no um problem i think that is what i can say but if somebody has information that is more than what i've said i think we are, we are we, you are welcome yeah yeah i i thank you sir i i've heard someone saying that um he did something like that but i can't really remember i i, I come out I come, I come across some post like that i think what they need to do is if you have HND, you can also inquire from the school, as he said, or if you have the money, you can do West evaluation or use any other, or use NICE. Um, is it NICE or NICE or something? They can they can actually, their evaluation, just need to give your transcript, of, the transcript of your OND and HND, then it will be evaluated to um, the normal BSc uh, degree then you can use that one to be applying. I think that's what, that what some people do. They will just convert your OND and HND together into BSc. Does, does that help or is, is that okay? Chima and Ayorinde, is that good enough? Yes, sir. Thank you. I believe it's good. Great. So, so again, again, you just have to start something. When you start something, we get more experience from your experience. So start and let us know what drawbacks that you're having. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Any other question? Any other question? One more thing, with, with or without HND, as they said, whether they've evaluated or not, I think that it shouldn't stop you from reaching out to professors. Yeah. Nathan, can you stop the recording now? Okay. <laughs>